Okay, welcome. Today is our Tuesday Bliss Techniques meeting. So uh, as usual, we'll have a guided practice. And um, before the guided practice, it will be nice if you can have a uh, space where you can lie down. We're not going to get to that immediately, but um, it will be helpful when we get to that point. If you can have a space to lie down, you want it to be comfortable. You can do it in bed if that's what you have. Um, the thing about doing it in bed is you're probably in the habit of falling asleep in bed. And so it would make it more likely that you would fall asleep. But if you're confident that you won't fall asleep, then that would be fine. Otherwise, um, a, a nice, comfortable place on the floor, padded, so that you can be comfortable and warm. Where I am, it's cold. I'm shivering, actually. Um, so contemplating lying down on the floor here, I feel even colder, but um, you want to be comfortable. So before we get to that, uh, I want to... I, have a variety of things I'd like to share. Um, so the my intention with these meetings is to um, to enrich your life, to uh, bring uh, great healing and beauty and satisfaction uh, to you. Not that I have that capacity myself necessarily, but to be a conduit for that and uh, to help you to discover that in your own life. So that's what this is about and uh, and at all levels so that you can know that um, that that really is possible for you. Wh whatever limitations you've accepted or believed up to now, I, I my intention is for you to discover that None of those limitations are actually true, and that you can truly know uh, health and peace and happiness at all levels, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And um, so with that in mind, uh, I endeavor to try and uh, provide the most simple and direct and effective um, pointings, teachings, and, and uh, techniques that will help you with that goal or that intention. And of course, I'm human and uh, I, I, I'm learning and growing. And so I'm always endeavoring to uh, improve. So I think about how I can improve uh, quite a lot. And uh, so in re lately, I've been thinking, what are the things that are the most uh, helpful? What are the things that can really bring the most uh, benefits to your life? And uh, I don't know, you know, as usual, this is unscripted, so I, I don't have uh, I don't have a definitive list, but I, off the top of my head, based on the things that I've been considering, I want to share with you some of those things. So the first thing is something that I, I share here and there, and I shared a little bit about it on Friday, but I, I, I really want to bring it more. Uh, I want to highlight it a bit more because when I really consider what is the most important thing in my life, um, it, it is... Uh, devotion to God, and uh, you can call that whatever you want. I, I actually don't personally can use the word God a lot, but uh, it's the word that's most familiar to people. God, spirit, the supreme being, uh, the supreme intelligence. Um, and that might seem well, to some people, that's very comfortable and familiar. And to some people, uh, that is uh, an unusual or unfamiliar or even uncomfortable thing. But it is the most important thing when I really am honest in my own life. And it brings daily miracles in my life. And uh, it is something that I really want to um, 
to share with people, to uh, help people to know that you too can know those miracles in your life and in a very intimate way. So I want to just take a moment to um, to talk a little bit more about that. You know, many of you know, I think you know that a uh, very, very, very important teacher in my life is Ramana Maharshi. And if you know anything about Ramana, or if you think you know something about Ramana, um, then he, devotion may not be the first thing that comes to mind because uh, that wasn't particularly something that was uh, spoken a, a, about a great deal um, in the traditional sense in, in Ramana's teachings. Uh, his primary focus, uh, what he's most known for is self-inquiry. Um, but it is is very clear to me that uh that devotion is an essential uh part of any uh truly realized being's life and ramana not in, not uh is not excluded from that uh last year i uh got a book called the uh tripura rahasya and it's uh i got it well, by by grace, really. I mean, it was it came to me, but um, it's published by Ramana Ashram, and it was uh, a scripture that Ramana refer apparently referenced a great deal. It's uh, said that in the in the publication, it says that it was the scripture that was perhaps most referenced by Ramana. It's a relatively short read, and it's not a massive tome like some scriptures, like the. Um, Yoga Vasishta, which I've referenced in the past, is is quite a, a big book, whereas the Tripura Rahasya is it takes you know if you if you if you are uh, you could read it in a day if you really wanted to if you were really focused on it you could more likely you'd read it over a couple of days, um, and I it's had a tremendous impact on me and uh, it's given me a lot of insight that. Um, is very valuable. And so I would recommend it to anybody who is, um, is a sincere, is sincerely interested in uh, improving their life. And uh, so it's uh, Tripura Rahasya, T-R-I-P-U-R-A Rahasya. And to be honest, I don't know what Rahasya means, but Tripura means the three jewels, or no, rather the three cities. And um it is um it's really a remarkable book it's we can't give you i can't really describe the entire book to you it's it's really um just a remarkable book but um the 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 in the context of devotion um that book makes it clear uh in in the writing and it's also um, confirmed in my own experience that uh, the highest and ultimate uh, path in life is a path of devotion, and it's a devotion to the Supreme. That, um, as Ramana understood it, it, it's the self, which is true. It is the self. It's the I in all, all that is. There is nothing apart from that. Um, but it's also made clear in that scripture as well in, uh, as in others that um, if there's a particular form of the divine that is uh, attractive to you, that you have uh, a resonate, that you resonate with, then the devotion to that form is uh, an appropriate and uh, very valuable path. So um, the 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 three cities which are referred to by Tripura are the three states of consciousness. I mean, there are many other ways to understand it, but we can understand it as the three states of consciousness, which are waking, dreaming, and, and deep sleep. And um, the particular form of the divine that I am uh, most attracted to is uh, is. Maha Tripura uh, Sundari, which means the, well, Tripura is the, 
is the three cities, is the three states of consciousness, as they described in Sundari means beauty. So the beauty of the three cities and Maha means great. So that which is our transcendent of. So it's the that which is uh, transcendent of the beauty of the three states of consciousness, which is the the ultimate uh, being. It's the supreme being. And um, sh she is conventionally understood as a as a as as a she um but actually mahatripura sundari is neither male nor female neither masculine or feminine because she is the supreme but the important thing here is that um she's the mother of all she's the mother of all creation so everything comes from this and everything returns to it and as I often point out, it's not that difficult to discover it in your own life. You can simply um, notice right now that everything that is occurring is arising in consciousness, formless awareness, and it returns to formless awareness. The important thing, though, is that it is um, not separate, that it's, uh, it, it's imminent, that everything that is, is in fact that. There's nothing separate from it. And so all the forms uh, and, and all the forms of the divine, this is why if, if you're attracted to any particular form of the divine, it's an appropriate uh, path to have devotion to that. Because uh, she is the mother of all, all the gods and goddesses. And so uh, th they're all one with her. And uh, so I'm, I'm mentioning this because if you have a if you're attracted to a particular form of the divine whether that's it, whatever if it's jesus or if it's uh the god of the hebrews or if it's the um if it's allah or if it's uh buddha or if it's uh it, it, you consider just a great spirit or whatever it is i strongly encourage you to um develop a a personal relationship with that and to have that um strengthen that every day because through that you can discover profound miracles and i i, I really sincerely mean that and i'm mentioning this uh, at the beginning because uh, what's become clear to me um, is that the 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 um uh, ultimately, what really matters is your experience. Uh, so all the things that, all the knowledge and all the techniques that can be shared, they don't matter at all unless they connect to you through your direct experience. And actually, if you understand what I'm saying here, which I know I'm maybe not saying it in the most clear way, but I'll try to make it a little clearer, that um, you, you, you are that. You are that. Uh, being and so your experience is intimately one with that that's where it really makes that's where it all, all really becomes true so that's why just reading books doesn't matter that's why just attending uh lectures doesn't matter i mean i shouldn't say it doesn't matter it, but on its own it's not enough it has to connect with your actual experience with your direct experience and to cultivate that relationship with the divine is what actually ultimately makes it real for you. And um, if that doesn't quite make sense to you, I would understand why it wouldn't, because if you don't have the experience of it, it won't really make sense. But practically speaking, how can you make use of this? Uh, prayer is the, is the actual answer to that. And then if you want to know, well, how do you pray? I would say, actually, any prayer is an appropriate prayer. The, there are so many variations on how to pray, um, but the sincerity is what really matters, and um, that's the, fun, the foundation of it. So I would strongly recommend that if you don't have, uh, uh, if you don't pray regularly, that you do so. Um, and if you don't know, if you don't know how to pray, you know, if you say, "Well, okay, that's all fine and, and dandy," but I actually still don't know how to pray, then just from your heart, just say, 
divine, uh, whatever, whatever that is for you. If it's a particular form, you could say Jesus, you could say Buddha, you could say whoever it is, or you could just say divine. I, you know, I, I don't know who you are, but I, I want to connect with you. And just know that just simply the, the divine is imminent. The divine is everywhere. The divine is in your own heart and soul and mind everywhere. And there's no place that the divine is not. So the instant that you uh, open in that way, then the connection is made. And you don't have to even believe it. It's just the truth. So you just make that sincere intention from, from your heart. And you just say, divine, be with me. Help me. Guide me. And then I would suggest this um, as a very good prayer if you want some suggestion. Say, guide me in all ways. When you start your day in this way, it will be very powerful. Guide me in all ways today. Guide my mind. Help me to have the right thoughts. Help me to have the right understanding. Help me to see in the truthful way. Help me to learn what I need to learn today. Help me to be in the right places today. Help me to be with the right people. And just surrender everything to that and know that the Supreme is in fact Supreme and that there's nothing separate from that. And so when you have that intention and you surrender it in that way sincerely, then it is so. And the power of this is incredible. It's such a simple thing, I understand, but it's so powerful. So uh, do it every day, every morning, start your day in this way. And then do the same at night. You can say, again, you connect from your heart and you just say, divine, thank you for being with me today. Thank you for guiding me. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for protecting me. And uh, if I've made any mistakes, Please forgive me and correct my mistakes. Of course, the divine forgiveness is, uh, you don't even need to ask for forgiveness because the divine is unconditional love. But for your own sake, it can be helpful because we have so many judgments of ourselves. So you can just say, please forgive me, accept me, and uh, correct my mistakes. If I've had any misunderstandings, help me to have the right understanding. If I've not learned anything correctly, help me to learn it correctly. And be with me tonight as I sleep. Guide me. And just repeat this every day, and you'll see the power of it. Because then throughout the day, when you have doubts, concerns, worries, fears, and so forth, which we all do, then all you need to do is just know that you've made this, this the sincere prayer, and it is answered. It has to be. There's, it absolutely has to be. You, you just take my word for that to begin with, and then you'll see that it's true. And uh, the power of this, as I've said, is just incredible. And it will grow and grow the more you do it, the more that you trust in it. You'll see that it really is true that you are guided, that miracles are happening every day, every moment in big and small ways. Everything is happening in exactly the right way. Um, along with this, I would say that the next most powerful thing um, is it's it's not really a separate thing it's kind of the same thing but just also to uh, affirm as often as possible that uh, only good can happen in your life that everything that's happening is for good and the power of this is also incredible because we have at least if you're like me you'll notice that there's a lot of doubt, you know, is this, is this, am I in the right place? Am I doing the right thing? Is this all, am I having the right thoughts? Am I with the right people? Am I, should I be doing something different? What should I be doing in my life? Where should I be? What, you know, so much confusion can come. So much um, hesitation, so much doubt and, and fear and anxiety. And the, this is also very, very powerful. So as often as possible, as often as needed to just affirm that only good can happen in my life, that everything that is happening is for good, even if I don't yet understand it, even if I ha have judgments that this is not a good thing, somehow it is good and I open to that. I open to the learning that is here for me so that I can grow, so that I can heal, so that I can surrender, so that I can discover the divine within me. 
and know and trust in that fully. Be carried by that. Because if we're trying to do this life by ourselves, uh, well, I don't know about you, but I know for me, for sure, uh, if I'm trying to do it by myself, if I'm trying to do it on my own, figure it all out, it's absolutely overwhelming. Not just a little bit, but absolutely overwhelming. And the you know, modern context really reinforces that. If you All you have to do is, is, well, don't please don't do it. But if you were to sign into Facebook or if you were to look on YouTube, you would just be inundated with how everybody else seems to know something that you don't know. Everybody else seems to have figured something out that you can't figure out or you haven't figured out or you'll honestly never figure out. And it's a recipe for misery. And that's, I know for sure, not what you're here for. It's not what anybody is here for. We're here to know the truth. We're here to know that truth intimately in every level of our life. And that truth is unconditional love. That truth is goodness. That truth is a divine truth. And so you want to, uh, you really want to know that everything that's happening is good. And then you'll find that less and less are you interested in any of those things. If, you know, you, if you sign into uh, YouTube for some reason, because there's something actually valuable for you there, then um, you'll see all these other things there, but you won't be, a, you'll, you'll just realize none of that's for you unless it is. But if it's for you, then it's good. But most of it, you, you'll you know it's not for you. You'll know, I don't need to know, you know, the five foods I should never eat. I don't need to know that. I really don't because I'm I'm guided every every moment to eat the right things. I'm attracted to the right things that are perfect for me. And my body is able to digest them perfectly, absorb them perfectly, and it gives me health and vitality. I don't need to know what somebody else's opinion is because there's a lot of opinion out there. <laughs> and you're not here to live somebody else's opinion. You're here to live the truth for you, your divine truth, the, the reason that you're here. So th those are the most important things. Um, I think those are the, that really kind of covers it. <laughs> so I, I hope that that I hope that that makes sense to you and that you can um, that you can implement that and, and receive the value of it. Oh, one other thing that I also uh, want to share because it's also very, very important in my own life is the uh, the clarity and the direct realization which comes through, the willingness to uh, affirm it and and observe it that life is lived from the inside out that the uh, the way in which most people have been well all of us by and large have been taught um to live is is um inverted because we're taught that there's uh, an objective reality out there that uh we need to somehow figure out and we need that we're somehow um, subject to that it is we're at the effect of that external reality. And uh, I I know for sure that that's not true. I, I know for sure that life is lived from the inside out. And I know that you can know that too. And this is very, very powerful because when uh if you believe, if one believes that life is lived in the conventional way where there's all this stuff out there that I have to, I'm at the effect of, I've got to figure it out, I've got to navigate it, I've got to uh, solve all these problems externally, then we become victims, we're powerless. Nobody can really deal with that. It's too much, it's overwhelming because it's an enormous, virtually infinite world out there in this tiny little peony thing here and what chance do i stand against all of that none 
So to realize that actually, or at least just to be willing to entertain sincerely that life is lived from the inside out, and I'll explain what that means if it's not clear to you, uh, is it, it is also very powerful because it, it's what actually restores power to where it really belongs, which is here now. So uh, when I say it, it's lived from the inside out, what I mean is that our um, what we would understand is our inside is what actually creates the outside. So we think oftentimes, or at least we've been taught, that there is, as I said, an objective reality out there and that it it is, and then we have to deal with it. But actually, when you start to observe really carefully, I, I'm, I know that you'll discover, as I have, that the, there is no objective reality out there that I, at least not that I have access to. What I have access to is my subjective reality, and that's all I have access to in, in that sense. In fact, actually, that's all that I have access to, because this uh, the supreme being is the supreme subject. So there's, in, in fact, only subjective reality. There's This is why it's uh, one without a second. It's why it's a non-dual reality, because it's actually only a supreme subject. There's only supreme subjective reality. Um, so to uh, be willing to entertain that, just to start to see that, if, that, in fact, indeed, it is true that all I have access to is my subjective experience. I don't have access to an objective reality out there. Means that I'm freed from giving my attention to uh, something that I don't have access to. I, I, it was only in my imagination that there was something out there. But in reality, all of it is happening here now in the subjective reality, which it, I have intimate access to. And then I start to realize that what I considered to be objective reality out there, uh, now that I see that it's actually in, indeed just subjective reality here, it consists of my thoughts, my opinions, my judgments, my reactions, uh, and so forth. That's what gives shape to the experience. I've covered this many times before. I won't belabor the point, but I'll briefly touch on just to say that, you know, as I've pointed out, if we have this thing that I say, well, there's an object here. But how do I know the object? The only way I know the object is through my subjective experience. It's because I have the sensation. I have a thought about it. There's a, a, a seeing. And the, the thought out of habit says, well, I'm seeing something out there, but the seeing is taking place here. The hearing is taking place here. The feeling is taking place here. All, the thinking is taking place here. None of that is happening out there. The, the idea of an out there is happening here. All of it is happening here. So the so-called uh, object, so-called out here, in fact, is only known here subjectively. And when you start to notice and see this in your own life, you'll see that it's it's true of everything. So it's true of, of your relationships with people. What a, uh, an enormous relief this is. Instead of trying to change other people, you can be liberated so that you can just stop believing the insane, painful things that you believe about other people. Uh, try it out and you'll see what an, an enormous relief it is. And that includes the, the insane, painful things that you believe about you. Because your idea of yourself is as some kind of object. But when you start to see that all you're, you're all that you know of yourself as an object is, in fact, just subjective experience, you're liberated there, too. You don't have to believe any of that stuff. You can start to realize that. All of the things that I believe about other people and about myself, I can let go of. So then you start to realize the power of intention, as I often point out, which is how we usually start these meetings, is to realize the power of intention. That when I have a clear intention, a conscious clear intention, that gives, that's the ultimate uh, shaper of experience. That's why, the, the, again, the power of prayer, the power of the affirmations that I've suggested, because when I know 
because I've started my day surrendering to the divine, saying, guide me, protect me, be with me at all levels of my experience, then I know that that's my intention, therefore it is. So then we start to see that, uh, that I have this good intention, that's what gives shape to all of my experience. Now, out of habit, I leap to all these other conclusions. I think, oh no, this shouldn't be happening. Oh no, I'm getting angry. I'm not supposed to get angry. Oh no, that person is treating me badly. They're not supposed to treat me badly. On and on and on. Oh no, I'm experiencing pain. I shouldn't experience pain. But when I surrender at a deep enough level I, I re and allow my intention, my, my true healing intention to ultimately shape my experience, then everything that occurs is in fact good, you see? The, the thing that I thought was pain is, is in fact good. N not because I should experience pain per se, but because it's not pain. It's because it, what's happening is good. I just didn't yet understand it. Out of habit, I, I interpret it in an unhelpful way. I interpret it in a painful way. But through the power of intention, when I'm clear on my intention, then all of my experience begins to take shape according to that intention. And this is why the path of devotion is the ultimate path, because when my, my ultimate intention is the communion with the divine, then can you see what happens? Everything is the divine. Everything is communion with the divine. Every experience is the divine. There's nothing that's not that. And then everything is, 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 is uh, absolutely wonderful. Now, I'm telling you this not because I have achieved perfection in any of it, necessarily. So I don't want to come across in, or present something in a, in a misleading way, like I'm some sort of ultra-enlightened guru. But I do want to be clear that I know what I'm telling you is the truth, and you can know it to be the truth as well. And when you know it to be the truth, then you will know that truly all is well, even though you might react in ways that you still don't like, even though there might be fear and confusion that arise. Nonetheless, you can know for sure directly, sincerely, honestly, and completely, what I'm telling you is the truth for yourself. And one last thing I'll say about this um, is, again, uh, from the, the um, Tripura Rahasya, is it, it states in there, at one point, it's talking about um, the classes of realized beings. So, I mean, particularly, it's talking about in terms of realized beings, I mean, they, they use the term yani, uh, which means, a, we'll say, realized being. And they say there's three, three classes of, there's three is the magic number. There's always three of everything. Well, except for when there's not. But in, but here, there are three. There are three classes of, of yanis, okay? There's the, the high class, the low class, and the middle class. No surprise, right? I mean, it's, it's simple. It's obvious. Now, all of them share something very fundamental and important in common, which is that, well, all of them have jnana, which is the self-knowledge. All of them have realized the self. But they've realized it to varying degrees, some at a high degree, some of them at a low degree, and some of them at a middle degree. Uh, and the, it's, it, it goes on to say, well, the, the, at the high degree, um, and this is where Ramana was living. It's, this is to be liberated while living. And this is uninterrupted knowledge of the self, so un uninterrupted self-realization. Well, doesn't that sound wonderful? You know, it's a very, very, very wonderful. So we can aspire to that. We can all uh, respect that and adore that and appreciate that. But it also makes it very clear that the middle class and the low class also are ha, have the fundamental realization. So at the, the lowest level, it states clearly there may be mom there will be interruptions in the clarity of self-realization. 
So there will be moments when it's clear, and then there will be moments when it's not clear. So there will be moments when it's realized all is the self. I am that self. All is divine. It's imminent. It's eternal. This is all there is. And then there will be moments when it's like, oh, I'm this person and I've got these problems and what am I going to do? Woe is me. So that maybe doesn't sound ideal, but um, a very important point here is that it, and, and it, this point is made in the Tripura Rahasya, is that even so, that that realization still is, is sufficient, that uh, it may be that for the lifetime, this will continue. It may be that for the lifetime, it will um, all, you know, resolve into uninterrupted self-realization, but regardless, and it states even, even if the person was to die in the in a in, in a coma or in a in a sewer or you know like in some bad situation doesn't matter that the, the realization is complete and there will be no more rebirth for this uh for this one and so the highest team has been achieved um so I, I i guess the reason i'm saying this is because i want you can have uh, you can you can be gentle with yourself, and you you don't have to uh, you don't have to worry so much. You know, to have, in fact, it even states oh even to have had a single glimpse of this truth, even to have recognized it by inference, is sufficient. And I can't state. For sure, for everybody who's here presently, because some of you I don't know well enough, but for some of you, I know for sure that you've had those glimpses. It's undoubtable. And so to have had the glimpse even once is sufficient. So you, I'm saying this not to say, okay, now I'll go party. I'm saying, be gentle with yourself. Know that you don't have to push and strive so hard and beat yourself up so much that you can relax. It's okay. And the more you can relax and trust, the better it will be. So that was a very long introduction. And now we'll get to the guided practice. So if you have a comfortable place to lie down, uh, please lie down and we're going to explore today um we're going to explore the um really primarily i think we'll only just explore the uh arch and curl um movement from uh hannah somatics and we're going to explore it i believe uh with a depth that will be revelatory to you uh, so if you're, if you don't have a comfortable place to lie down, uh, then you can imagine it and that will be something that will be helpful to you nonetheless. But if you do have a comfortable place to lie down, please do. And, uh, if it's you, you know, I have been exploring doing this movement, um, with, feet flat on the floor and uh so knees bent feet flat on the floor uh, i should say specify lying on the back so we're going to lie down on the back and uh i've explored the movement with feet flat on the floor knees bent which is the way that hannah describes it in his book and um and the, the way that it's taught by hannah somatics trainers and clinical somatic clinical somatic educators um i've also done it uh quite extensively lying with uh legs straight and um i've also been experimenting doing it with uh legs um i don't actually have a good setup for it to do it but uh i i do it so i do it in a slightly modified way but it, it would be somewhat equivalent to doing with your legs 
lying on the back on the floor, but the legs on a chair. So like hips and knees bent at 90 degrees. And that's also a very revealing and interesting way to do it. So I'm mentioning this because you can try any of those that you like. You could try all three. Uh, you could, you have options. And I would say, choose one for now. And then when you're practicing on your own, you could try it in, um, in a variety of ways and see that the different ways of doing it give you different insights and experience um, that will be valuable. So uh, what we're going to be doing, for those who are not familiar, is we're going to be doing uh, a very simple movement uh, that is a classic movement from Hannah Somatics. And the aim of this movement is, um, it's a two, two part movement. And one part of it is aimed at um, reawakening our awareness of the red light reflex. And the other is uh, aimed at reawakening our, in our awareness of the green light reflex. And for those who don't know what I'm talking about, um, it's just basic patterns of movement. Humans, uh, Hannah identified that there are three basic patterns of movement that uh, make up the complexity of human movement. It's flexion, extension, and then a combination of flexion and extension, which is the pattern that we use for walking, for example. Um, but red light and green light are the flexion and extension patterns, and we're going to explore those. So most of, uh, well, ev everybody has some degree of what Hannah calls sensory motor amnesia, which is that we uh, are holding tension in these patterns, but we've forgotten that we're doing it. We're unaware um, that we're actually holding that tension. Uh, or at the very least, we're, uh, we've lost our ability to um, voluntarily release it. So even if you are in the unfortunate situation of being aware that you're holding the tension, you may not be aware of how to release it. And uh, this leads to an enormous uh, number of uh, discomforts, to put it mildly, physically, mentally, and emotionally. And so these simple movements are, uh, when done correctly, are very, very powerful for uh, freeing up our experience so that we don't stay locked into these unconscious patterns. Um, so the for those who don't know, uh, and for those who do, it will be a helpful reminder nonetheless, when we do these movements, we do them slowly with awareness. Now, the slowly part is actually, maybe I should just say, we do them with awareness. <laughs> Um, and slowly uh, helps to do them with awareness because when we slow down, we uh, it's like a biohack. We uh, change the part of our nervous system that's utilized in order to do the movement, and it will uh, start to make things that are unconscious patterns conscious uh, for us. So the movements that we're going to do should be done slowly with awareness. So you're lying on your back and, and whichever position with the legs and feet that's comfortable and convenient for you. And we're going to start by doing the arch. So you can be aware of your spine and having the, uh, the inner uh, awareness of your spine, just bringing your attention to the spine is uh, powerful in and of itself. So just notice your spine. And your spine uh, could be completely relaxing here in this position because you don't need to be holding any tension there because you're supported, but most of us are holding some tension and you're either aware of it to some degree or you're not, but uh, we're gonna release some of that. So we're gonna start, as I said, by doing the arch pattern and we're going to simply uh, gently and slowly and make a small arch with the back. So the, the lower and middle portion of the back will gently s start to move up away from the floor or the bed or whatever you're lying on. And it's slow and small and conscious. So even if you just are imagining the movement, that's better than just unconsciously flinging yourself into something. So don't think that you have to make some kind of giant arch that's not going to give you the best results. 
Thank you God. want to be in able to control the movement. So make us a, a arch that you can that's comfortable and convenient for you and then slowly and this is the most important part begin to relax the spine so that it comes to rest and when you are coming to rest come even more to rest so a lot of the time what happens a big mistake that we can make is that we just sort of arch and then relax arch and relax and arch and relax, but we're missing the part where we really relax even more. So slowly, slowly, slowly relax. And then when you think that you're all the way relaxed, relax even more. You will maybe just be imagining that you're relaxing more. That's great. Just imagine that you're relaxing more and then something miraculous will happen. So repeat that a few times. And you might think this is too silly, it's too slow, it's too small, nothing good could happen here, but you'll be surprised if you sincerely apply yourself to it. So now, while you're doing this, um, what you can do that will help you is you can place your hands on your hips. So the right hand on the right hip and the left hand on the left hip. And this is much better and um, easier and more comfortable and will give you better results if you're wearing comfortable clothing. If you're not wearing comfortable clothing, then next time wear comfortable clothing. But uh, ideally, you can actually feel your hip bones, the iliac crests of the pelvis. So if you have ever seen a picture of a pelvis, of a pelvic bone or the pelvic bones, they're really multiple bones that are fused together, you know that there are these big crests that come up on either side. And you want to find those with your hands, the right hand on the right crest and the left hand on the left crest. And you can have your thumb wrap around the back side and the rest of the fingers on the front side. So you're kind of gently grasping those crests on either side as you're doing the movement. So notice that as you arch, those the pelvis actually tilts. It's an, a gentle anterior tilt. So you can feel that the crests are pivoting. So your hands should give you that feedback so you can actually notice that that's happening. And as you're doing this, have the intention that you can feel with increasing clarity those bones. So for most of us, we're holding so much unconscious tension that in that area, I mean everywhere, but in that area in particular, that we can't really get a clear sense of the shape of the bone. I mean, we just have a vague sense that there's some bone there somewhere. What I want you to know is that it's possible for you, and in fact, it's your, uh, it, it is your birthright. It is the, um, it is, it is how you are designed to be that you can clearly feel and sense those bones so that you can really sense the shape of the bones and that it feels good. You feel confident, comfortable, powerful when you do it. So have that intention. And each time that you do the movement, allow yourself to release more and more. So you'll just start to notice that you're holding tension and that you can actually begin to release that. You don't have to know in advance how you could do that. You'll find that you do know how to do that. That doing this simple movement with the hands placed in this way, with this intention, will reawaken in you that awareness of how to release so that you can feel those bones with increasing clarity. And you might be. Uh, surprised to discover some things about your pelvis, about your hips, that 
you you have a uh, very actually you can start to sense that your uh, your pelvis is is quite beautiful. It's really quite beautiful. It's very powerful as well. So you don't be afraid. It seems maybe a little funny thing to say, but don't be afraid to be very attracted to your pelvis. You know, be very find your own body to be very attractive. That's good and okay. So as your hands are there, allow yourself to feel how attractive, how beautiful your pelvis is, how powerful your pelvis is, how supple all of the, the soft tissue is that is supporting the pelvis. And you can feel that perhaps that your lower abdomen can begin to really soften and release so that the pelvis can move more freely. And that the, on the backside also, the, the part, parts of the buttocks that your thumbs are touching, that that also can soften and release, that you don't have to hold so much tension there. You really can feel on the front side and on the back side the shape of the pelvis. Okay, so now, Hopefully, you're noticing that each time that you release, you remember, you're coming to neutral, you're releasing, and you're releasing more and more deeply. So even if you're just imagining it, you're really giving yourself that moment to actually allow for a deeper release. So you might find that your pelvis actually starts to come to a deeper rest rather than being gripped in this sort of like floating uh, position all the time, it can really start to rest and release and be supported by the floor or the bed or whatever you're resting on. So that the the pelvis actually can start to come into a truly neutral position. So that the the lower back can release, the lower back can actually start to come into contact with the surface that you're resting on. And you can start to feel good you can start to actually feel that you can really release and relax and, and be here in a good way. So now, notice that I haven't suggested that you need to coordinate this with the breath in a particular way. And we're not, obviously, this is a somewhat shortened practice today. Um, so we won't take a lot of time to explore that in detail. But when you're practicing on your own, uh, you can explore what it's like to uh, move in coordination with the breath or to move without being coordinated with the breath. And both ways are very valuable, It'll give you insights. So, uh, and, and consider that if you're moving in coordination with the breath, you have a lot of possibilities there. You could inhale as you're arching and exhale as you're releasing. You could Exhale as you're arching and inhale as you're releasing. You could inhale as you're arching and then stay arched and exhale and then inhale as you're releasing. You could exhale as you're arching and then inhale while you're arched and then exhale while you're releasing. See a lot of possibilities. I think I mentioned I've done a lot of this. <laughs> I've explored a great deal. So, there's so much variety that you can explore and don't let that variety overwhelm you. Just know that there's, it can keep getting better and better. That's the point is that now you should be somewhat uh, pleasantly uh, almost excited about it, about this, this, this dawning realization that I can keep feeling better that I have so many different ways that I can explore this, that each way is gonna to reveal to me something new that will allow me to feel better, that will allow me to move with more grace and power, that will allow me to feel good as I'm moving and feel good as I'm at rest. It will allow me to have a more peaceful emotions. It will allow me to have a clearer, calmer mind. It will allow me to have a more positive outlook. All of this is absolutely true. I, I really sincerely mean it. And you will see that that is true as you continue to explore it. Now, 
for the remaining few minutes that we have today, let's explore the uh, curl. So just when you're next at, in neutral, just rest there. And what we're next going to do is, in a sense, it's the reverse of what we've just done. We're going to curl the spine so that the lower back will press into the floor or the bed or whatever you're lying on. And uh, that means the pelvis is going to, instead of an anterior tilt, it will move into a uh, posterior tilt. So almost, I, I, I'm going to say this just because I have to say it, it's almost going to be a bit, almost like an abdominal crunch. But now that I said that, please know that it is not an abdominal crunch <laughs> because we've probably all done those and then you have an idea of how to do that. And we want to not try to just do something mechanically, but that's the general kind of movement is that the lower back is going to press into the surface that you're lying on. The, the tailbone is going to curl up, you know, up, up away from the floor. And uh, that's the general idea. So now explore that movement. So you're going to curl and then release. And the same principles apply here as when we were doing the arch, which is you don't have to do the world's biggest curl. In fact, please don't. Start small. You could stay small. You could start small and you could go to medium. But don't go big. Just start very small. Slow, smooth, with confidence. So even if it's, you're just imagining it, that's okay. If you if you have to only imagine it, then do that. That's better than doing it in uh, a big movement that's not done with awareness. And also remember, as you come to release to neutral, let yourself really slowly release. So even slower than you think. And on the when you think that you're all the way released to neutral, release to neutral even more. Come even more to rest, even if in, only in your imagination. And you'll be amazed that it really works. So here too, you can have your hands on the, on the hips. This is just one of many hand positions that I find is very helpful. And uh, it's the only one we'll do today. Perhaps tomorrow we'll uh, explore some others. But this one by itself it is very, very uh, helpful. And I hope that you're discovering that. So as your hands are placed there on the hips, you, same thing here is you're feeling with increasing clarity the shape of the pelvis with every movement so that you can feel just how relaxed all of the musculature around and connecting to the pelvis can be. And boy, is there a lot of musculature connecting to the pelvis. The pelvis is very connected. <laughs> so you'll find that you can keep getting deeper and deeper releases, that the pelvis gets clearer to you with every movement that you really honestly should be amazed. I, I mean that sincerely. You should be amazed at how much clearer your pelvis becomes to you, how much more attractive your pelvis becomes to you, how much more powerful you feel your pelvis to be. Because your pelvis is very powerful. The pelvis is the uh, core of your movement. Every movement that you do involves the pelvis, or at the very least, it should involve the pelvis. But for most of us, we've lost the awareness. We've, the pelvis is locked up. So we're restoring our natural power, our natural uh, ability to move with grace. Uh, 
Okay, so for today, that is what we're going to, that's the entirety of our practice for today. Before you fling yourself into something, please just rest and notice that you can actually feel yourself in a new way and let yourself feel yourself in this new way. And as you're feeling yourself in this new way, I want you to know really sincerely, I want you to know for yourself, I want you to invite this knowing within yourself that this is just the beginning, that it can keep getting better and better, clearer and clearer. And that's the truth. That a miracle has just happened and that it's just the beginning, that miracles like this can happen in your life every single day. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Allow yourself to really relax and feel into yourself and feel how delicious it is to be you, to have this experience, to be able to feel yourself. And even if there's sensation that has been awakened that you're not quite sure how to interpret that sensation, because sometimes that happens, sometimes there's sensation, we say, wow, that's a lot of sensation. And the brain will interpret that as some pain or discomfort. Just surrender, just for a moment. You don't have to sustain it forever, but it just for one moment, just surrender and just have an inner smile, have gratitude, knowing that everything that happens in your life is good. Sincerely, that just open to that and know that everything that happens in your life is good that whatever this experience is, it is good. It is revealing something new, something true, something wonderful to you. And you, you, the more you surrender to that, the more you open to that, the more you allow that, the better it will get. And if you just allow yourself to surrender just for one moment right now, you'll taste that, you'll know that to be true sincerely. And then whatever follows, you, you can always return to this knowing, knowing that indeed, I had a taste of it. I had a taste that there's something really wonderful possible for me and that I really knew it at least for one second and that you can then build upon that, that that can be the foundation for your life, that you can start where you are and then you can grow that goodness in your life. You can grow that trust in your life. You can grow that surrender in your life and know with increasing clarity, depth, and confidence, the goodness that you are, the goodness that is uh, your life, that is in store for you, and that is your birth rate. So uh, when you are ready to move on to the next thing, whatever that is for you, please do so mindfully. Just take a moment to make that transition slowly to feel good in the transition. That might be something new for you. Maybe you never occurred to you that you could have that possibility that you could transition in a good way. It can be revelatory in and of itself to know that you can be present and conscious and surrendered in bliss and joy and happiness and ease and comfort in everything that you do. There is no pressure that you must do anything in a bad way. You always get to choose. You can choose every moment to be a wonderful moment. So just choose to move in that way when you're ready. And if you'd like to rest here for a little while longer and you have that luxury, please give yourself that. But when you're ready to transition, move in a good way with confidence, gracefully. And if you're not sure how to do that, then just take your time and trust and know that it is possible. And even if you don't do it perfectly, and who does? You'll learn something, you'll grow, and it will get better and better every time. Um, so that's it for now. Thank you, everybody, for joining me today. Blessings to you all, and I'll see you next time.